Now let's stay on the movie beat if we can now, because today's guest co-host is an award-winning uh, writer who's contributed to a number of titles here during his career here, Arab News, GQ, Middle East, uh, Esquire, Middle East as well, several other distinguished uh, publications during his time. Now though, his beat is of course, arts and culture editor at The National, uh, a man who knows just about anything there is to know about all things movies and more. William Mullally, always good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you again. So let's start let's stick on that theme of different, if we can, William, because, um, okay, let's stay, stay with movies, something that's very dear to your heart as well. It's been part of your career throughout your life. Um, you say movie, people think cinema straight away. They think blockbusters. They think, okay, what's the next Fast and Furious that's going to release in Dubai this weekend? What, up to mm -hmm. number 34 now, whatever it is. But, but there is so much more to the word movie. And what's great to see is that there's so many more festivals or certainly areas you can indulge in that around the city now. Is that something you'd agree with or not? I think ultimately what people crave is novelty. You know, yeah. people are always looking for something new. And when the cinema starts to feel like you're seeing the same sorts of movies all the time, it gets boring, yeah. you know? So yes, we all love a Fast and the Furious movie. We all love, you know, Deadpool and Wolverine. But I think going to some of the smaller venues, seeing films that you might otherwise not see end up being an amazing experience, even if that's not what you were necessarily expecting. It might not be the, you know, the amazing sort of luxurious experience where you're sitting in the reclining chair. But I think they're sort of, you know, having a more cultural um, side to things ends up being really, really rewarding in the end. Which is what movie lovers and true movie lovers are looking for to a certain degree. You're into a certain genre of film. You might be into anime. You might be into something a little bit more arty. You might be into multi-language films, etc., or lower budget films. And again, I remember 20 years ago, you just couldn't see those here. But now it strikes me that there are a number of places you can go to and during this time of year, um, sort of almost festivals and weeks put on to dedicate it to them. Yeah, and I think Cinema Q, especially um, in Al Sarkal, has done an amazing job of finding different sorts of angles. And they have a lot of amazing themed weeks. Upcoming, they have the Anime Film Week, um, which is going to be, I think, a really amazing showcase of some of the most beloved films in anime history. Obviously, in Japan, they have, I think, you know, years and years of different, you know, various sorts of stories. But um, Hayao Miyazaki, who's won many Academy Awards, I think has brought in a lot of new people to the art form. And his films such as Spirited Away, or The Ghosts, um, or not The Ghosts, sorry, the, the Boy and the Heron, which just won the Oscar earlier this year, I think do an amazing job. Even if you've never seen a film like this, these are the films to start with, because they are just feasts for the mind and the soul. Yeah, and I mean, look, the anime is a massive thing. You've got the, the Abu Dhabi, the capital, just hosted the, uh, the, the the wonderful anime festival as well, which is going on. That's that's amazing. Um, but how do you see the industry as a whole taken away from anime? Because I've heard that Hollywood is going through some some issues, as it were, when it comes to producing and making movies. Uh, do you see more um, production houses making films here? I think the because of the changes in technology, because of the, the changes in just pure budgetary reasons, you have to be able to bring in different audiences and engage them in different ways. And I think the more that that becomes a global conversation by necessity, the more different sorts of voices are able to contribute to that. So I think, whereas in the past it might have just been holed up only in Japan or only in Hollywood, I think there's a, a huge um, opportunity for creatives in Dubai, creatives across the Middle East to be contributing and, and not even just telling their own stories, but working together to tell stories that I, I think have global appeal, which you're seeing with you know people in Saudi Arabia working with people in Japan, people in Dubai working with people in South Korea. I think it's there's a really amazing exchange of cultures that's been happening. Mm. Uh, William, I want to uh, throw a uh, kind of left question at you uh, for people who are thinking of actually heading to the cinema uh, this weekend. Joker 2 is out. There's been many mixed reviews. Um, Talk to me about that. What, what is your opinion on it? You have to sing your review. Okay. <laughs> Man. But I'll, I'll try to sing it not nearly as badly as did Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix oh, and Lady Gaga. Lady. But that was the idea. You know, I think they were given, uh, I'll, I won't pull any punches, it's a disaster. Mm. And I, I think it's driving a lot of people away from the cinemas yeah. when we thought it would be pulling people in. Because I think it was just mishandled from the start. People really resonated with that first Joker film in 2019. It was a film kind of about how when society gets you down, when, when life isn't growing your way and you feel alone in the world, you can be just driven to these really terrible extremes. And I think it's, it's less of a celebration of that, but a warning against it. It was a really open-hearted film that people saw themselves in, in a way. This one undoes all of that. This is really just, we're watching 
the same guy, Arthur Fleck, going through um, a court case about the same you know, crimes that he committed in the first film. He's um, struggling with his identity and he's singing about it um, in ways that are mostly inexplicable throughout the film. He meets Harley Quinn, played by Lady Gaga, who's in love with the Joker, this idea, this monster that he is, and she's encouraging him to be. But it never goes anywhere. You know, you might expect, uh, I think watching the, the trailers, you might expect this to be an adventure that these two characters are going on. Maybe, maybe the idea is, yes, he doesn't want to be the Joker. Maybe he gets pulled on some, to something beyond his control, and she's pulling him into something that he's not happy with, and there's an actual story. We spend our time spinning our wheels. So who do you blame? Do you blame Todd Phillips? I 100% <laughs> 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 right, yeah. Let's leave the review at that, okay, in case Todd's watching at the moment, because we're trying to get him onto the sofa at some point. But no, listen, uh, we've dedicated a lot to the big screen. Let's talk about other screens. Uh, uh, let, let's talk art, if we can. Give us a mark our card for a couple of the art events that we should be looking out for. I think this is the season when really we start to see amazing artists, both past and present, um, bring their wares to our region. And I think over at the Opera Gallery, um, on the palm right now, Manolo Valdez, the Spanish um, sculptor, has done a tremendous job. This is his second time coming to the UAE, but they have collected a lot of his amazing sculptures that kind of blend past with present. You see these little hints of, you know, a classical sort of maybe the alluvian um, sort of sculpture that you might see, but he does something to spin it on its head. There's almost a, a Picasso-esque, um, I think, revitalization of this classical material. You'll see a face that has just been bursted with butterflies. I, I think he is really an amazing, amazing voice um, getting into probably, well, hopefully not, um, the later stages of his career. But I think he is just as vital as ever to the art scene. And I so actually went there uh, to go and really? see it. Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. There's a wonderful wooden piece on the, on the right-hand side as you just walk in to the one on the palm. Because obviously you've got the uh, DIFC one and you've got the, uh, the one on the palm as well. Fantastic, yeah, I loved it. Well, you know what, lucky for us, Williams, you're, you're comfortable. You're going to stay with us Good. here on the couch as we delve even deeper into what you can get up to that's different over, over the weekend. Uh, but if you are a dad right now that's tuned in to DXB today, coming up next, we have the chief camper of Father and Kids Camping, the organizers of unforgettable camping weekends all across the Arabian Gulf. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> 